Mr. Depp, on April 26, 2015, Jerry Judge, and Jerry Judge is your former security guy who, who passed away a couple years ago, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and he writes you and says, hi, boss, just wanted to say if you and Amber need anything, just let me know. I will be there in 20 minutes. Johnny, it is lovely to see how you and Amber are so happy. The other day watching the two of you sitting on the bench by the sea was fantastic. The two of you need happiness and it is really great to see that. Love to you and Amber, XOXO, Jerry. Did I read that right? You did. And beneath that, you texted him back and you said, thank you, my dear Jerry. Very, very kind, mate. We've been perfect. All I had to do was send the monster away and lock him up. We've been happier than ever, all caps. Love you, brother, JD. Did I read that right? You did, sir. Michelle, could you please pull up exhibit 445, defendants? And in the text that we just saw, when you were used the word monster, that Miss Heard wasn't on that text message, was she? No, that was between Jerry and myself. Okay. Thank you. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I think this, the moving of the chair, the swing of the chair, I'm going to call that a, an adapter. I am going to say that it's repetitive, so I'm going to say it's self-soothing. He's self-soothing during that. And in fact, during that kind of interlude between one email and the other email or text and the other text, you're going to see him nodding his head like this. That's a self-soother as well. It's almost like he's got a song playing in his head at the same time. So if you fancy something to do, you know, rip that out, uh, put a tune with it, uh, put a link to it and, and, you know, let us know what song you think is maybe going through Johnny's head at that point. But there's a self-soother going on there. I don't quite know why. Uh, Chase, what do you think? I think it's probably Metallica, but I'm not sure the <laughs> that song. <laughs> uh, so when he says the monster, I'm going to go full-blown Bowden on you guys. Oh, nice. Thank there you. we go. The Wait definition minute. of monster is a creature af affected with a birth defect, malformed animal. And it's the French derivative of this is demonstration, which means to indicate or show it uh, to people, which is a lot more evidence here of him using this dissociative language technique or this dissociative language tendency, I should say. There is no monster in there. And even people with multiple personality disorder, or dissociative identity disorder, there's one human. Like there aren't two humans inside of that brain. So it's, it's a dissociative capacity of the brain. I'm not saying he has any kind of disorder here uh, with, with dissociative uh, symptoms there, but that's common in his language. And I think it's common in something you see in a lot of actors. And I will throw the caveat here. The only reason I knew the definition of monster is from an eighth grade report that I had to write. Scott, what do you got? All right. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, I agree with you, Mark, that, that that whole chair thing is that's an adapter. It's it's a self-soothing thing. Uh, but the glasses look a little bit odd, but there's reading glasses. And he puts them on when he has to read something or he's asked to read something or he's asked to read. And he's under control, but he's squinched up a little bit because he's got to be on guard for the questions he's being asked. Again, this is... This is uh, one of those cases where as he's being asked these questions and everything seems all calm and smooth, that's when they hit you with a zinger and you got to be ready for it. So I think he's ready for it. Um, and the monster he's talking about here, I, I agree with you. It's that this is what happens when he's been drinking and all that stuff. He turn, I think he's he artistically turns into the monster. That's what he that's what he calls himself when he starts doing that. Um, we're seeing actually uh, some like patients. Frank right? Frank. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing some uh, anger here a little bit, not a whole lot, but we're seeing it sneak up in there. So uh, and not a lot of derivation from other expressions, or you know, not a lot of of um, coming out of that into a lot of the stuff. He's he's pretty stable in this thing all the way through. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. His eyes are down right here because he's looking at a monitor. Those glasses are blue blocking light things, so they're weird shade. No big deal. He this is the first cross we've seen cross-examination so he's, his lips are drawing narrow he doesn't look the same he doesn't look as relaxed he's kind of leaning forward he's adapting to your point mark with the nodding and all of that um you can see his discomfort the smirk right here 
in my opinion, is this is recognition that's not good for him. It leads me to believe every time I see him do this smirk that it might have been a defense mechanism he's had his whole life. You know, I know he had a rough life. He went through a lot of stuff in school. His mom was abusive. And that smirk might be and that sarcastic personality he has might be his defense against all of that. And it just bleeds out. But you can see when things are not going well for him, it's going to do that. And you can see he's doing there. I'll, re I'll call this the swivel rate because we'll see the swivel rate increase as he comes up. And Chase and I can mimic him as things go. That's what I got. <laughs> all right. Mr. Depp, on April 26, 2015, Jerry Judge, and Jerry Judge is your former security guy who, who passed away a couple years ago, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and he writes you and says, hi, boss, just wanted to say if you and Amber need anything, just let me know. I will be there in 20 minutes. Johnny, it is lovely to see how you and Amber are so happy. The other day watching the two of you sitting on the bench by the sea was fantastic. The two of you need happiness, and it is really great to see that. Love to you and Amber, XOXO, Jerry. Did I read that right? You did. And beneath that, you texted him back and you said, thank you, my dear Jerry. Very, very kind, mate. We have been perfect. All I had to do was send the monster away and lock him up. We've been happier than ever, all caps. Love you, brother. JD. Did I read that right? You did, sir. Michelle, could you please pull up Exhibit 445, Defendants? And in the text that we just saw, when you were used the word monster, that Miss Heard wasn't on that text message, was she? No, that was between Jerry and myself. Thank you. And on May 14th, 2015, you blow up that text. Michelle, please. You texted Mr. Duders, need to discuss the news helicopters hovering outside the house this morning. I'm ready to shoot. But don't worry, the monster is not involved. Correct? That's, I see that, yes. And Miss Heard wasn't on that text, was she? No. Let's pull up Exhibit 196, please. <clears throat> this is on page two. Please. Chase, what do you got? I'm going to ride this uh, dissociation train a little bit further down the track, but I'm going to promise I'm going to get off here, give or take. There's some more indication that there's some separation between himself and the monster. <clears throat> and this isn't indicative of any kind of disorder uh, by itself. In some cases where there's a lot of dissociation and there's there's some severe dissociation, the denials of crimes appear 100 percent truthful that they did not commit that crime because in their mind they didn't. It was some other entity. It was some other thing that committed that crime. So that's something to watch out for. But I don't think his dissociation is is that bad. If this was the case, which I don't believe, Depp didn't do anything harmful to Amber at all. It would have been the monster had it had anything actually happened which i don't think it did scott again his attorney's focusing on the monster that's what their big play is in this to create this monster in everyone's mind to think when he starts drinking and he does it all the time he becomes this really bad guy he's fairly still his lips are pursed and this uh doesn't indicate um that that he doesn't agree but you can tell he doesn't agree with what's going on there that's when you see lips pursed you usually think ah that's an indication that there's an issue there and in this case i think he doesn't agree with, with what's going on uh amber's in the middle of something else she's not paying attention much attention uh to anything but um i think she's focused on something else greg what do you got yeah, I see. I, I think Amber Heard is doing something specific. I think she saw something she wanted to make a note about. She writes the note, she hands it over, and there's a little bit of to her when she does it. It's a little bit of self-justified looking thing. I wrote, if we only had somebody who could read handwriting from here, we'd be okay. 
<laughs> but he adjusts his coat in either an adapter, barrier, or combination because when they talk about the monster, what they're really saying is Amber Heard said, well, if you didn't drink, if you didn't have this monster, if you didn't turn into this bad guy when you do this, you didn't have this monkey on your back, whatever it is, it's an excuse. It's an excuse for bad behavior when you're drinking it or whatever, or something she doesn't, who knows what's going on. But the volatility is caused by some combination of chemistry between the two of them, and that creates some kind of chaos. And they're referring it to, to it as a monster. And what this guy's trying to do is to get him to admit the monster is real because they're going to use some other verbiage later that's going to paint him into a corner. Now, we all know that there's a whole discovery process when you're going to trial. So all this stuff is not new. He knows a whole bunch of stuff is going to be introduced and he's getting backed into a corner. And you can see he's getting more focused. His mouth is narrow and we associate that with discomfort or anger and his eyes are focused on the guy and locked down. Big difference from what we saw earlier, that adapter, all of that, he knows that they're painting him into a corner with this with this language, and he's going to have to come out and defend it somehow. Mark, what do you got? Yep, so I'm just going to take this opportunity to talk about what they're both wearing, because as I've seen on the media, that seems to have been quite an important thing for people. A lot of focus on he wore a tie with a B on it, and then she wore something with a B on it, and that might have been important. Maybe it is important. That mirroring could be important. Of course, the B is emblematic of royalty, of the monarch, the the single B uh, ruling over the, the hive. Absolutely. Actually, maybe we'll come to that. Uh, who is king of the court a little later on. But let's have a look first of all at the way Heard is dressed. She's got that white shirt with the top button done up, but no kind of neck piece on there. I And dark, dark suit on. I think that's in order to come across as uh, relatively conservative, if not puritanical, that drinking drugs would be a very, very bad thing. It almost looks kind of Amish or Hasidic. Though, unfortunately, from my point of view, when you show up in court and you have your top button done up and no tie, it means you've had your necktie taken away from you for very important reasons. Uh, and I've, I've, yeah, so, so never, I, I would never advise anybody to turn up to court like that, but maybe it's different in, in the UK in, in Canada. Certainly, um, yeah, it's a very bad sign when you've had your necktie taken away from you and you're in front of the judge. Um, but equally so, Depp, scraped back hair, so he hasn't got any of that Captain Jack Sparrow floppiness around him. He's got a tie on, he's suited up. There's not too much extraneous kind of uh, wear around his... his, his um, uh, his wrists there, uh, only a few rings. So he's really, really toned it down. This is certainly not the Pirate King uh, showing up for this. So everybody playing relatively quite a conservative look here. And on May 14th, 2015, you blow <laughs> out that text, Michelle, please. You texted Mr. Duders, need to discuss the news helicopters hovering outside the house this morning. I'm ready to shoot, but don't worry, the monster is not involved. Correct? That's so she that, yes. And Miss Heard wasn't on that text, was she? No. Let's pull up exhibit 196, please. This is on page two, please. So we talked about the cocaine and the ecstasy. Let's talk about the, 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 the alter, argument, altercation that you and Ms. Heard had in Australia. Um, you, you, you testified that you were sitting on a bar stool right in, um, in australia this is before you, you, so you're fast forwarding to the the end of the uh, of that argument yeah 
we've we've heard we've heard your account of the argument and the jury will hear Ms. Hurd's account of the argument. What I want to ask you is some specific questions about you you're sitting on a bar stool, you've had three or four, I think you said three shots of vodka. I did two uh, or three shots of okay. vodka, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you're resting with your hands kind of hanging over the edge like that, right? Uh, well, after the first bottle whizzed past my head and shattered, as I said, I walked around the bar, grabbed the larger, there was another bottle of vodka, the only one there, the larger bottle brought it back and poured another shot and did it. <clears throat> and right, and, and that, that was a, like a, what we call a handle of vodka, is that right? Well, it, yeah, it's one of the larger bottles with the, it's got a handle on it, yes. Right. And it was, it was full at the time, other than the shot that you poured? No, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the full, full bottle. No. Okay, um, and, and, and at some point before you, you claim you sustained an injury to your finger, you were, I believe you demonstrated to the jury yesterday, but you were resting with your three fingers, um, your middle three fingers kind of hanging over the edge. Is that, is that fair? Is that right? Uh, Yes, I just had a okay. bottle thrown at me, so I was, when she grabbed the second bottle. Right, I'm just asking where your fingers were, sir, at that point. Your fingers were, your palm was facing down and your three middle fingers were hanging over the edge of the bar, correct? Basically, okay. that's correct. Um, All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, again, we're seeing, because he's in cross, he's leaned in more, his mouth is narrow, his focus is hard, his eyes are making good hard contact in a way he didn't when he was in direct, because he now has a threat. And we have a threat, we're gonna take in more data. I can't see his pupils, but just about guarantee his pupils are dilated. We can see a little respiration up for a change in him, which we haven't seen to date. His head goes down to the right, and then um, his forehead's up at hold on, are you fast forwarding? You can see he's trying to say, hold on, there's more to this than you're giving me. And then he starts to nod on the intake as he's picking up what the guy's asking, makes hard eye contact once again. His blink rate goes really fast as he gets threat recognition. He drops his chin back to doing what he usually does. And he does that quick nod as he makes hard eye contact with someone. And Mark, I think you brought it up earlier. I think who he's making hard eye, eye contact with is the jury. He's playing to the audience. Again, doesn't mean he's lying, means he knows where he should be focusing. Then he illustrates with his forehead up, goes back into some concentration around all the questions they're asking. And then he has one brow rise again, meaning something's emphatic to him as he's talking about having the bottle thrown at him. He swivels. His brow drops and furrows. You can see the stress is rising. This is giving him a reason. His speech is even faster, if you notice. You can see that he's got some fight or flight here. That slow droning speech pattern he had before is gone. So now you can tell that he's in cross instead of direct. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I don't have much here. There is some interesting stuff going on with the eye contact that he's showing as well. The second step and one thing that maybe a lot of us do, I definitely teach people, is we're showing less respect and helping the jury to understand the level of respect that this person deserves through the eyes of, of a witness. And this is a great example of just a witness telling the truth, how they should be telling the truth, how we would teach them or help them to tell the truth on the stand. He's unrushed, uh, comfortable ensuring that the memory is told as he recalls it, not how he is instructed to recall it by the attorney. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, uh, so I agree, Greg, playing the audience with this idea of the three shots. Yeah, I had three three shots. I think, uh, as you were saying before, Greg, there's an edge of sarcasm to that. And and yeah, he is, I think, trying to indicate to the jury that, that this is slightly puritanical of um, the uh, the uh, the lawyer here to 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 be to think is extreme to have two or three shots. It's not a big thing. Well, it's really interesting for me. He says, um, uh, and, and I did it. Not I, I drank it. I did it. So this idea of drinking is a very definite action. It's a big statement, something that he does. It's a big statement. And then we get the story of her taking control of that bottle and then delivering it 
maybe accidentally, who knows how good her aim is, but in the story, delivering it to his drinking hand and cutting off his drinking hand. So th there seems to be a narrative here, a story here of him control, of, of somebody needing to be in control of the drinking hand and maybe in control of the monster. Is this whole battle around who controls that monster and who can summon it and who can calm it down or or say that it can't appear because my guess is for the for the addict for the alcoholic uh there is a certain comfort in the monster always being able to come along though there's pain involved there is some kind of control there going on anyway uh, this is just speculation. I just put it forward as that's the kind of thing my brain gets interested in at this point. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. Well, he's on high alert as this attorney's trying to get him all worked up, and he knows that's what's going on. So he plays it. I think he plays it really well. And we see anger in his facial expression. It's you got flared nostrils, the shallow breathing, and the pursed lips again. Um, his shoulders are in, inward just a little bit in protection mode, and his cadence is a little fast. His answers are short compared to the way they've been before. The the pauses are there, but they're not not quite as trying to draw you in as hard, I think, at this point. And his gaze is focused on threat, which is the attorney. So that's what I got. So we talked about the cocaine and the ecstasy. Let's talk about the the the, the alter, argument, altercation that you and Miss Heard had in Australia. Um, you 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 testified that you were sitting on a bar stool, right? In, um, in Australia, this is before. You, you, so you're fast forwarding to the the end of the or, or, uh, of that argument. Yeah, we've we've heard we've heard your account of the argument, and the jury will hear Miss Heard's account of the argument. What I want to ask you is some specific questions about. You, you're sitting on a bar stool. You've had three or four, I think you said three shots of vodka. I did two um, or three shots of okay. vodka, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you're resting with your hands kind of hanging over the edge like that, right? Uh, well, after the first bottle whizzed past my head and shattered, as I said, I walked around the bar, grabbed the larger, there was another bottle of vodka, the only one there. The larger bottle brought it back and poured another shot and did it <clears throat> and right and and that that was a like a what we call a handle of vodka is that right well it, yeah it's one of the larger bottles with the it's got a handle on it yes. right and it was it was full at the time other than the shot that you poured no it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't the full, full bottle no. okay um and, and and at some point before you you claim you sustained an injury to your finger you were, I believe you demonstrated to the jury yesterday, but you were resting with your three fingers, um, your middle three fingers kind of hanging over the edge. Is that, is that fair? Is that right? Uh, yes, I just had a okay. bottle thrown at me. So I was, when she grabbed the second bottle. Right, I'm just asking where your fingers were, sir, at that point. Your fingers were, your palm was facing down and your three middle fingers were hanging over the edge of the bar, correct? Basically, okay. that's correct. Um, Miss Amber was seven to ten feet away, correct? Once she walked, yes, once she grabbed the bottle, yes. Okay. And your testimony, and we, we've, we've heard it yesterday, but your testimony is that somehow she wound up with this handle of vodka and, and threw it and it, 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 it uh, damaged part of your middle finger. But what, what we didn't talk about, and what I want to ask you about, is it didn't, if it happened the way you said, it didn't didn't damage any other part of your hand, correct? No other part of your fingers, no none of the other middle fingers that were hanging over the edge of the bar were injured. Correct? Objection compound. We can right. take it piece by piece. Let's none of the objection. none of the three fingers that were hanging over the edge of the bar were sustained any injury other than your middle finger. Is correct? Um the middle finger certainly took the brunt of it as okay. the tip. And, and there's cut, uh, cut off. There's no there's no record of any glass being found in that middle finger. Correct. Objection calls for speculation. I'm I'm. I, I'll allow it if you can answer. Um, I'm I'm I'm. 
not a doctor and I'm not sure what uh, was uh, found in the middle finger. What I do know is that when I went to the emergency room that they, <clears throat> they had to um, inject me with a block to be able to put it into a bucket and, and take a wire brush to, to scrub it um, all clean because I had all the makeup still left from pirates on there and makeup from pirates. Okay. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So just a little kind of piece of body language repertoire here for you. His lips purse. So that's like a drawstring purse forward. Like it doesn't do it that big. I'm just demonstrating for you uh, on seven to 10 feet. Pursing of lips will tend to mean there are no absolutes, but it tends to mean disagreement or there's an alternative or there are some parameters that should be put around this. So we see the purse of the lips and lo and behold, he says once she got the bottle. So he puts a parameter around it in order to be able to agree. So just nice bit of uh, repertoire for you there to look out for in other situations. And then, of course, what I really like is um, tip cut off. He plays to the jury. He knows that he's not trying to convince the lawyer here. He needs to convince the jury. They're the people with the most power. Now, what can often happen in this situation, because the lawyer can be annoying or or feel very authoritative is you as the person in the stand start playing to the lawyer and making them one of the the main people in this tale when really the power is over with the jury and you need to be making sure they're getting the story they're being convinced not the lawyer in front of you they have a whole different agenda which is they're either not on your side or they're very much on your side chase what do you think on this one yeah, let me just give you a few tips while you're watching this. Never, ever let somebody recap testimony and repackage it, ever. And this is what was attempted here. If you listen closely, this attorney rebuilds the story for the people present in the courtroom. And when you're forced into these closed-ended questions, I would be very careful. Be even more careful if someone summarizes or omits information and then simply asks you a yes or no question. Answer how you want to and provide the details relevant if you're ever in this situation. The lawyer also does a tactic here called covert recapping. When he when he just says all of the story about the hand and then he says, yeah, they had to wash off the makeup from pirates. So the lawyer recaps the entire story with, yeah, makeup from pirates to make it sound almost ridiculous. And this is a technique you see pretty often in well-trained attorneys to trick people. And here are the steps really quickly. A person tells a story, you recap it with only a few keywords and make it sound pretty silly. Then we're triggering something called the recency effect, making the jury or the court more likely to remember that detail when they're recalling that testimony in the future. So never let that happen. That's all I got. I'll just, I'll just leave it with the pro tip. Scott, what do you got? That's all I agree. Got. Yeah. But you know what? I think he did. I don't think he did a very good job of that, Rick. I don't think he very, did a very good job of all that. That guy's getting on my last nerve. He's 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 coming on like he's got it figured out, but I don't think he's doing a very good job of that at all. So anyway, Johnny Depp's blink rate is way up compared to to everything else we've seen so far. His cadence is faster, and his diction is clean, and it's on point. You can understand everything. Um, he's got incredible engagement. And now Greg's going to talk about this, but he's got incredible engagement in his forehead muscles. The glabella shows concern and so many reactions moving and, and from one to another as it goes. It's like this flow uh, that Greg was talking about earlier. It's really, uh, really cool to see. And he's been animated physically uh, as this is a gory story and it's a painful memory. So it makes sense that he would he would be doing that. His breathing rate, should, I, in my opinion, should be a little bit higher than it is uh, to make a definitive decision about whether he's, you know, actually having a limbic reaction to all that. Um, but his jacket's kind of loose and that, and kind of big, and so is that shirt. So it's it's kind of tough to make a call on that. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, he starts off with a little bit of what I would refer to. Some of that's lip pursing, some of it's concentration mouth. You know, we move our mouth as we're thinking and trying to internalize things. He does, his swivel rate increases dramatically. He's moving around a lot, if you notice in that chair. And his blink rate increases. I, Scott, you're right, he's got a lot of forehead involvement at the right times, trying to drive his point. He does what, it, what, is refer, what I refer to as his baseline. He does the search for change, 
He does a lot of forehead movement. He looks and he makes hard eye contact. To your point, Mark, right at the jury, right at the right people at cut off. It's on my list of things. He illustrates what happens very clearly with his forehead. His He uses his forehead to illustrate a hell of a lot. And then the interesting piece is he takes a little bit of holy ground as he gets to, I had makeup on my hands from pirates. Because let's face it, that's about as ubiquitous as maybe not anything religious, but anything in American culture. Everybody knows what pirates is. So he takes a little bit of holy ground, but he also looks a little bit nervous and does a downright glance with some emotion at that point. And I think we'll see why coming up. That's all I'll, I'll cover. Miss Amber was seven to 10 feet away, correct? Once she walked, yes, once she grabbed the bottle, yes. Okay. And your testimony, and we, we've, we've heard it yesterday, but your testimony is that somehow she wound up with this handle of vodka and, and threw it and it, 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 it uh, damaged part of your middle finger. But what, what we didn't talk about, and what I want to ask you about, is it didn't, if it happened the way you said, it didn't, didn't damage any other part of your hand, correct? No other part of your fingers, no, none of the other middle fingers that were hanging over the edge of the bar were injured, correct? Objection compound. We can All take right. it piece by piece. None of, the, none of the three fingers that were hanging over the edge of the bar were sustained any injury other than your middle finger. Is correct? Um, the middle finger certainly took the brunt of it as okay. the tip. And, and there's cut, no, uh, cut off. There's no, there's no record of any glass being found in that middle finger. Correct? Objection calls for speculation. I'm, I'm, I, I'll allow it if you can answer it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor and I'm not sure what uh, was uh, found in the middle finger. What I do know is that when I went to the emergency room that they, <clears throat> they had to um, inject me with a block to be able to put it into a bucket and, and take a wire brush to, to scrub it um, all clean because I had all the makeup still left from pirates on there and makeup from pirates okay a second but neither of right. none of the other fingers on your hand were sustained any injury that you're aware of correct uh no there were there were nothing else was severed no. okay and in fact it wasn't just makeup from pirates that was on your hand it was paint that you had dipped your middle finger into to write along with blood to write on mirrors and lamps and assorted furniture in the house, correct? Objection, compound. All right, I'll sustain it to compound. If you... it, there was, it wasn't just makeup. You testified yesterday that it was just makeup from the set of Pirates 5, but in fact, after you sustained an injury to your finger, you dipped it in paint in the house and you wrote in paint mixed with blood all over the place. Objection, compound. I'll sustain the objection. You dipped your finger in paint in the house and wrote on objects in the house. Objection correct? compound. I'll sustain the objection. You dipped your finger in paint after suffering an injury. Yes. And then you use that finger to write on objects in the house. Uh, yes that, or no? Yes, that was after I had, um, after writing on the walls, the uh, blood had kind of dried as it were and or, and so I uh, stuck my finger into a can of paint and also <clears throat> excuse me mineral spirits to um, to put my verbal messages onto the wall and you use your you use your finger as a paintbrush right essentially yes and all right chase what do you got I don't have much here there is a tiny little concealed smile on Amber during this. And the times that you see her smile throughout this nine hour thing is during his uh, being beaten by questions or something or being embarrassed. And most of it is him being embarrassed. Anytime something is embarrassing, she she enjoys the the destruction uh, of this human being. And that's the time we're seeing her all smile. I'll leave. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. Mark, what do you got? 
Yeah, I totally agree. He is, um, he knows that this is uh, antisocial behavior. This is extreme behavior. When you use uh, your bodily fluids to express yourself on walls, it's generally considered as, you know, in most societies that I've ever come across as uh, antisocial behavior. He knows this. This is beyond the usual or certainly part of the chaos and the madness that in part he really uh, wants to inhabit because it has a, a, a Byronic romance to it. At the same time, it's totally antisocial. And she loves, I think, because she, she tries to hang her head in shame as well that this has occurred you know in in she's seen this happen it's awful that this has happened in front of her and then we see that little smile uh, easy to detect there um so there is uh, disdain and disgust that johnny shows around this action that he's done i mean just to show you that this is not normal behavior uh, last summer i cut off the top of my thumb or part and didn't cut it off completely but I gouged a massive massive um uh, gash in it with a chisel and uh, and there was blood everywhere i mean uh, you'll love this scott yeah i know you love these kinds of uh, kinds of stories and um, and I was super upset with myself. I was I was lividly annoyed with myself because it is a rookie mistake. You never chisel towards your your hands. I mean, it's just it's basic. It's fundamental. I was so annoyed with myself. But at no point did I walk into my home and write messages to myself on the wall. <laughs> what an idiot I was. And then even if I had, if I had run out of blood, I wouldn't have then got some paint and started to you know do it some more. When I tell you that story, you realize it's bizarre and outlandish, and that's exactly what he's done. It's extreme. Uh, Greg, what are your Greg, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, so this may be one of my favorites of the whole thing. He starts off by looking, and, and Mark, I live on a farm. My hands always have nicks and cuts. I guess I should start painting messages on the barn, keep people away, right? They'll, they'll know not, not to come to my place. Yeah. But he starts off looking down left, down right, like, where is this going? And then he stammers. We, all, we always talk about cadence and stammering as mattering. In this case, it doesn't because it's his baseline. He goes, no, no. And then he makes hard eye contact with his head shaking. That's what he does. Go watch every interview with every talk show and you'll see that. But watch him do a stiffen neck transition and a head roll when it gets to that paint thing where did you stick your finger in paint? And he goes, uh, and his mouth goes, and he's going to say something. And here's why you need an attorney when an interrogator gets you, because you hear that attorney step in and go, objection, objection, objection. They're going to do that at every turn with an interrogation. So if you get arrested, they're your rescuer and you hear her rescuing him left and right. But what happens then is he swivels pretty hard. She rescues him. His respiration, his blink rate and his swivel rate are all through the roof. And his face has shrunk. Now, if you go look at him in the beginning where his face looks wider, his face is now very narrow as all of his his mouth is drawn and tight and he's pursing his lips and you see the stress in him. And then you see you dipped your finger in paint that you cut tip off your finger and he inhales, drops down to emotion, has a quick bolt of his eyes to the threat. And I see Andrew in him as he tries to explain the unexplainable, as he kind of does some weird head roll and he is trying to figure out how do I figure out a non-crazy way to explain this? And it's just a bunch of chaff and redirect and garbage running down the way. There's no way he is going to explain this in a way that makes him look good. And he should just stop. I would have just said, look, no, you know, I, I did something crazy. I, I can't tell you why. I told you I had a nervous breakdown. Instead, he tries to rationalize something that's not rational. And if he did anything so far in this that makes him look really bad, it's there. It, when he says dried as it were is when he looks like dried as it were, like a Andrew kind of move. And then I see her. I have one note, Chase, a smug C. That little smile is a C. I told you he's crazy. I think she wins in that spot. That's all I got. All right. Um, in this. Uh, yeah, it's OK. In this section is his uh, blink rate is as high as it's been so far in all these videos and obviously that indicates stress and especially for this situation where you're being cross-examined with with somebody like that that's going to happen to you and he still takes time to think before he's answering but keep in mind that doesn't mean that he's being deceptive 
goes back to what we've been talking about before. He's thinking about the structure of his answers. He wants everything to be good, everything to be perfect, and sound the way he wants it to, wants it to sound. Some people are going to think he's pausing because he's being deceptive. I'm not seeing anything deceptive in here at all, not even a little bit. Um, Amber looks like she's reading texts or something. And again, that's not an emotional downward gaze, I don't think. I think she's, she's just texting or maybe she's not texting because you can't do that in corpse. She's probably writing something or reading something there. So that's what it looks like to me. All right, be good? Yeah. One second. But neither of, right. none of the other fingers on your hand were sustained any injury that you're aware of, correct? Uh, no, there were, there were nothing else was severed. No. Okay. And in fact, it wasn't just makeup from pirates that was on your hand. It was paint that you had dipped your middle finger into to write along with blood to write on mirrors and lamps and assorted furniture in the house, correct? Objection, compound. All right, I'll sustain it to compound. If you... it, there was, it wasn't just makeup. You testified yesterday that it was just makeup from the site of Pirates 5, but in fact, after you sustained an injury to your finger, you dipped it in paint in the house and you wrote in paint mixed with blood all over the place. Objection, compound. I'll sustain the objection. You dipped your finger in paint in the house and wrote on objects in the house. Objection, correct? compound. I'll sustain the objection. You dipped your finger in paint after suffering an injury. Yes. And then you used that finger to write on objects in the house. Uh, yes that or no? Yes, that was after I'd, um, after writing on the walls, the uh, blood had kind of dried, as it were, and or, and so I uh, stuck my finger into a can of paint and also, <clears throat> excuse me, mineral spirits to um, to put my verbal messages onto the wall. And you used your you use your finger as a paintbrush, right? Essentially, yes. And um, now, Mr. Depp, we're gonna we're gonna take a, a look at some pictures shortly. But y y you'd agree with me that there was quite a bit of damage to the house in Australia after this incident, correct? Um, there was there was quite a bit of damage to the house uh, during the. Um, the entire incident, yes. And you don't remember the television breaking, do you? I remember there was a, I believe there was a coffee cup stuck into the screen or a plate or something like that. And you don't remember the window breaking, do you? I don't remember a window breaking. But you do remember that there was quite a lot of blood everywhere, including on floors and sofas. Well, I'd noticed, that's how I'd noticed, uh, that I was uh, leaking. Um, there was heat in my finger and it was, I felt this warmth and this liquid and then I noticed that the tip of my finger was gone. And, and at that point, I think I went into some sort of sh shock or whatever is closest to a kind of nervous breakdown. Yeah, you testified that breakdown. It's, you, you could have um, also defaced a painting by drawing a penis on it, didn't you? I've never, I, I don't know about that. I don't rem remember drawing it's, a penis on a painting. Given the state you were in, it's entirely possible that you did that even if you don't remember it to this day, correct? Drawing a penis on a painting was not the first thing on my mind. Let's I had messages to uh, write, reminders that were from Miss Heard. All right, Chase, what do you got? I'm just going to go through a couple of these leading questions. You don't remember the TV breaking, do you? You don't remember the window breaking. You do remember blood everywhere. Then, very, very, I don't know. I don't want to say cleverly because I don't think uh, this is a, a very good job at a, at a depot. <laughs> but he says he changed... Depp says nervous breakdown and he covert recaps it to the word breakdown. So that that's what it's not a nervous breakdown because that implies there's some psychology there. There in the, it's just a breakdown. That's an unstable person. So I think that's maybe deliberate. Uh, and then this, 
You could have also uh, defaced a painting. Is it possible you don't remember anything to this day? These leading questions can make an attorney can do good for Depp because it makes the attorney appear to be hostile to the jury, to the courtroom. And it's really working that way. Like you just watch this video and you hate this guy. He's horrible. But the only time, again, uh, we're seeing Amber smiling is during the demise or the embarrassment of Depp. Uh, and if you look at all of these smiling about uh, injury that that Johnny Depp has been doing so far, and look at all of the stuff that he's doing, every time he gets angry, he's focusing the anger on himself, everything. So like uh, I was talking to somebody today and they're like, no, it's not always on himself. He destroyed the kitchen cabinets and stuff. And I'm like, those were his kitchen cabinets. That's self. He's focused on self, his own property. So it's kind of an inward focus, destruction and anger. He won't even go see his own movies. Uh, so I think that this speaks to his view of just not having much of a much of a, a buy in uh, for himself. Greg, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to be short on this one, but he's back to the narrative. He's trying to tell the story. When he's asked a couple of questions, he avoids the questions. He actually chaffs and redirects a bit. He just kind of spills out words that have nothing to do with the question to avoid the answer. Um, his blink rate is up through the roof. He's rationalizing, trying to say, look, I had this nervous breakdown. That's a rational enough reason. You could easily say, I don't remember because I was so out of it as a result of shock. Shock alone, if you've ever had like neurogenic shock or that kind of thing, you know that you don't necessarily remember. I drilled through my thumb one time. I never forget it. I was like, I don't feel so good. And that blood's going everywhere. And it was the first time I've ever been in a place where my army training helped and I put my feet up and didn't pass out. It was one of those kinds of things, but it was pretty horrible. It sucked. So he could have said, hey, you know, look, I was, I was not thinking, but he didn't. He kind of stammers. He does something, his cadence stops. It doesn't stammer, no, 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 it stops. Boom, 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 as he navigates his way through it. So I think he probably has some shadowy memory of all the chaos that was going on, and that would probably be appropriate. Now, if we assume that he has taken no drugs and he's had three shots of vodka, this is a hell of a tear for three shots of vodka to go through and do all this. So Scott, it might answer your question from earlier, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, what do you got? Maybe. Yeah, well, lots, lots of great stuff here. I just love the idea that a TV with a with a teacup coming out of it isn't broken. <laughs> That's, I mean, that is just straight, you know, straight out of Hunter S. Thompson. That's a real fear and loathing idea. I think that's fantastic. Um, I don't remember a window breaking and we see her do an eye block. She shades her eyes. I don't know why, but I'd be interested in that. I'd be interested in what happened there. What does she think happened there? I don't know why she eye blocks on that. Um, nervous breakdown, he directs to the jury. So he knows that that story of nervous breakdown is is one I think that could play well with the jury. And I think, yeah, the 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 um the lawyer here is a real pain but that's the lawyer's job really to get the rise out of him and see if they he can get him aggressive and and obnoxious and and this, this monster might come out in the middle of the <laughs> middle of this whole piece of theater um but i think the lawyer notices here that he's playing that really quite well to the um to the to the jury there um i i think i see heard smiles throughout this um i I think, or maybe I'd like to think that I think she just thinks it's very, very funny. It's just hard not to laugh at it is genuinely humorous what, what the lawyer comes up with that, um, you know, did you paint a picture of a penis on the, on the artwork? It's just, it's not expected. It's completely uh, obscure and bizarre and, and out there. Um, and, and I wonder whether she truly finds that amusing. I don't know whether she does, but I'd like to think so. I certainly see an eyebrow raise or some eyebrows there of, of confusion and then amusement at one point as well. Um, yeah, it is, it is quite nicely starting to descend into the kind of chaos that I know Johnny Depp seeks, that that's, that's a brand that he that he truly, truly wants and enjoys that feeling that he could be at that Hunter S. Thompson level, and, and undoubtedly is. He's one of the one of the great Hellraisers uh, out there, truly. Um, so, so yeah, great, great story. Uh, 
Scott? Yeah, Scott, what have you got? Yeah, well, I think you're right. I think this just proves my theory that he'd be one hell of a hang on the long weekend. Yeah, at his it's place. That'd be, that'd, that'd be the place to be, apparently, yeah. if, you, if you're trying to get stuff off your mind. So since you guys covered everything about him, I'll, I'll focus on Amber. Um, she's behaving differently here than she has anywhere else in, the, in, in all these videos. Her chin is up, and she's almost looking down her nose at him like people do when they're affirming something. And um, as this, I think she's doing this to let him know that she knows what – what he's saying is true, what the attorney's saying is true. And she's all, almost looks like a hype man back there. Every time he says something, she's like, yeah. She's not that quite that uh, demonstrative with it, but that's the feeling I got. She was, she was just saying, yeah, he's right. You know, he's right. All this is true. So it's probably true, you know, every <laughs> way you think it sounds. So who knows up to this point, it's what it sounds like happened to me. And uh, her chin is, is, is way up at this point compared to the way it's been up, uh, up so far. So that shows I think she's feeling pretty good about what's going on right there. All right, that's all I got on that one. Um, now, Mr. Depp, we're gonna, we're gonna take a, a look at some pictures shortly, but y y you'd agree with me that there was quite a bit of damage to the house in Australia after this incident, correct? Um, there was... There was quite a bit of damage to the house uh, during the um, the entire incident. Yes. And you don't remember the television breaking, do you? I remember there was a. I believe there was a coffee cup stuck into the screen, or a plate, or something like that. And you don't remember the window breaking, do you? I don't remember. Or a window breaking. But you do remember that there was quite a lot of blood everywhere, including on floors and sofas. Well, I'd noticed, that's how I'd noticed uh, that I was uh, leaking. Um, there was heat in my finger and it was, I felt this warmth and this liquid and then I noticed that the tip of my finger was gone. And at and that point, I think I went into some sort of shock or whatever is closest to a kind of nervous breakdown. Yeah, you testified that breakdown. It's, you, you could have um, also defaced a painting by drawing a penis on it, didn't you? I've never, I, I don't know about that. I don't remember drawing it's, a penis on a painting. Given the state you were in, it's entirely possible that you did that even if you don't remember it to this day, correct? Drawing a penis on a painting was not the first thing on my mind. Let's I had messages to uh, write, reminders that were from Ms. Heard. But you, you testified yesterday that you told Dr. Kipper uh, that Ms. Heard had, in fact, been responsible for your finger injury. Do you remember giving that testimony? Yes. Uh, but in fact, in subsequent communications to Dr. Kipper, you referenced more than once that you chopped off your own finger to Dr. Kipper, correct? I think the key word is chopped off my own finger. Um, when you say to someone, I've chopped my, I've chopped my finger off, um, that's just going straight to the fact. You don't get into, um, she did this, I did that, this, that. My, fin my finger's been chopped off. Okay. Let's take a look at exhibit 398, please. All right, Greg, what do you got? going to be very short here. There's not a lot in this video. He gets into a semantic discussion. I agree with it. I happen to agree with him. If I cut my finger off, you know, months later, I may say, yeah, cut my finger off. There's sarcasm, sarcasm and some smart assery in here. And if this weren't court, I bet it would be, it, you would get the best of his wit and all that stuff that goes with it. I, it's just, he can't do it in court. Chase, what do you got? Yeah. So just consider this for just a moment. If you broke your arm, how would you tell your friends? I broke my arm. If you got into a car crash, what would you say? I got into a, an accident. If you sprained your ankle, you wouldn't say I was fouled in basketball and Jimmy sprained my ankle. You just say I sprained my ankle. So that's, I think, what was there. There's more leading questions, and it's becoming a little bit more hostile. I think this is great, and it's it's for depth. It's gaining more sympathy in the courtroom. 
And there's just some socializing with the IU shift in the pronouns here. And I think his short laugh is actually going to be pretty persuasive in contrast to the hostility of the attorney questioning him. So that's winning a lot of points with the jury. Scott? Yeah, I agree with you. You don't get into the intricacies of how something happened when you're in the middle of getting it fixed at the very beginning there where you go, what happened? Well, it, you say, I cut my finger off or I've, you're, you're right, or I sprained my ankle or broke my arm, whatever it is. Nailed that. Uh, his flared nostrils let us know he's on high alert and his anger is growing as we, see, as we see this go along. This is the first time we actually see the real Johnny Depp here, I think. So from all the other... Um, the persona at this point is gone, and he's and he's talking for himself. I think he feels confident enough at this point to start doing that. Quite often, you'll see somebody like this who they'll they'll try to stay in their persona. It seems weird and everything, but at this point, he's put that aside and he's being him. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I, I'd agree. He's under a little, lot more pressure now, so we're seeing more of him. We see that from the little adapter on the mic there. He, I don't think he's done that before. It certainly, if he's done it before, it's because again, it's ramping up with the stress. There's no reason for that adapter. He knows where the mic is. He knows the strength of his voice. So that stress, that's anxiety happening there. Um, mirroring back with that lawyer, he's now playing with the lawyer using the word fact when the lawyer uses the word fact and in fact. So he's now mirroring that lawyer and there's a bit of competition around that. I think the laughter there is again, that laughter of absurd and again, I think that's the true Johnny Depp going, how do I know what to say when my finger's been cut off? You, you, you say whatever you say at the time, and then he can't believe that he's talking about what one says when one's finger is cut off. Who, who legislates for that? Who arranges beforehand? By the way, when your finger gets cut off, here's the way you should talk about it. No parent ever gives you that talk. No caregiver gives you the instructions of how to talk about it. So you just do what you do in the cir in the bizarre circumstance. And I think he's laughing at this is a truly absurd, bizarre circumstance. It's an unusual circumstance and an unusual that I'm having to deconstruct it in front of people right now. But that's that's court. You, you testified yesterday that you told Dr. Kipper uh, that Miss Heard had, in fact, been responsible for your finger injury. Do you remember giving that testimony? Yes. Uh, but in fact, in subsequent communications to Dr. Kipper, you referenced more than once that you chopped off your own finger to Dr. Kipper. Correct? I think the key word is chopped off my own finger. Um, when you say to someone, I've chopped my, I've chopped my finger off, um, that's just going straight to the fact. You don't get into, um, she did this, I did that, this, that. My, fing my finger's been chopped off. Okay. Let's take a look at exhibit 398, please. Mike, you're talking about, I don't know. I'm talking about Australia the day that Now I we're talking about finger. Australia. Okay, yes. You hear that? And you said the day I chopped my finger off? Let's let's play it again. Let's That'd be good. Again. Thank you. Hi, you're talking about. I don't know. I'm talking about Australia. The day that. Now we're talking about Australia. Okay. Are, are you sure that's? Yeah, let's do it one more time. What I actually saying? don't. Was it the day that I got my finger chopped off? No, no. You say the day that I chopped my finger off. So let's play it one more time because I think I left out the word that. It says the day that I chopped my finger off. Like you're talking about, I don't know. I'm talking about Australia. The day that now we're talking about Australia. Okay. I'm not so sure. In fact, earlier you had quoted Jerry Judge from uh, the airplane tape is calling me. Um, wait till the asshole falls asleep, and I'm positive that those words never left his mouth because he was. He would have, if I would have been making those noises in the bathroom, he would have ripped the hinges off. Maybe they left his mouth when you were passed out, sir, respectfully. Let's listen to this I don't one think more time. Was, uh, I don't I'll think he was. I'll sustain his argument. I'll sustain his argument and I'll move to strike. All right. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, there's a, when he is showing skepticism, there's a really 
powerful right brow up at skepticism when the guy's talking. And then he looks kind of, uh, she looks amused, amused for the first time. He's actually suffering here. He's actually starting to look like he might be getting painted backward in a corner. And she looks actually amused. You can see kind of, <laughs> it's a little bit of glee there. And then he shows enough concern right in through here where you were talking about earlier, chasing the globella with those bunch of muscles right through there. And he may be compromised. He chaffs and redirects and tries to take it and bundle arguments that take this one under because he says, look, you said this in the past and this guy couldn't have possibly said that about me. So he's trying to sink that when the guy goes and says, maybe he did when you were out of there, you see pursed lips of disapproval, some thinking and no, that didn't happen. I don't think so. Chase, what do you got? I agree with you. And based on the hours of testimony I've watched here and every previous interview that I've watched, she is, in my opinion, uh, responsible for this injury to the finger at a minimum. So if this is true and she did cause this injury, the smile here is nothing short of horrifying. And Depp used the wrong phrase. She's watching him suffer through it in delight and pleasure when she knows that she caused the injury. And Depp's entire testimony was about Amber being abusive and hurting him. And what you're seeing here, if my opinions are correct, they may not be, is her enjoying him being hurt yet again. And right at the end, there's a final contempt facial expression right at the very end of this clip. Uh, and I want to see if you can determine what she's feeling contempt about here. If you, if you can, throw it in the comments and uh, I'll give it a heart for you. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, lovely. So look, in white noise, in distorted speech, you can hear just about anything you want to. I had a listen to it just out of interest. I couldn't make out what was going on there, to be honest. Uh, stick your ear to uh, an air conditioner and listen for long enough and you'll hear Paul is dead. So, you know, just I, I it, 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 by the end of this, because it could be one or it could be the other. Uh, there's a move to strike, I believe, at the end. And we see Johnny Depp put his fingers to the side of his mouth, just kind of clean the mouth after he's eaten, uh, you know, the kill on that one. I think that's an indicator that he feels he's scored a strike on that one, regardless of, of Hurd's expression, which I, I guess he's not even seeing, you know, he's focused on the lawyer and he's focused on the, uh, on the, on the, um, uh, the jury there. But I think he scored a hit with that one, with those little kind of wipes to the side of the mouth, clean and, and clear. Uh, Scott, what are your thoughts? All right. I think you can understand what's going on there. Oh yeah. I cleaned up. Uh, yeah. I've cleaned up, um, several things for, um, police departments where there was a, a couple situations where what was being said as a crime was being committed um, need to be brought out. I haven't been in the music business for a long time and having all the stuff that I, I can do that and used to doing it. I'm used to listening to those things and listening for those things. So for me, it's fairly clear. So when you're, and when you're looking at Johnny Depp, you can tell he's into music because when he listens, he, he looks down and closes his eyes at one point. They're not closed the whole time. Some people do close their eyes. Some people don't close their eyes. But he's really focusing on that because I don't think he's listened this much before then. Maybe. Maybe not. But uh, this could be cleaned up a lot, and you could hear a lot better if they had if they had done that. So I don't understand why that hasn't been done in this case because it's you just, it's it's fairly simple to do, and there's always somebody that can help you to do that to get that done. So I don't know what's up with that. All right. Talking about Australia, the day that now I we're talking about finger. Australia. Okay, yes. You hear that? And you said the day I chopped my finger off. Let's let's play it again. Let's That'd do be good. Thank you. Hi, you're talking about. I don't know. I'm talking about Australia. The day that now I we're talking about Australia. Okay. Are, are you sure that's? Yeah. Let's do it one more time. What are you saying? Don't, or is it the day that I got my finger chopped off? No, no, you say the day that I chopped my finger off. So let's play it one more time, because I think I left out the word that. It says the day that I chopped my finger off. Mike, you're talking about, I don't know. I'm talking about Australia, the day that now I chopped my finger Now we're talking about off. Australia. Okay. I'm not so sure. In fact, earlier you had quoted Jerry Judge from uh, the airplane tape is calling me. Um, wait till the asshole falls asleep, and I'm positive that those words never left his mouth because he was 
he, he would have, if I would have been making those noises in the bathroom, he would have ripped the hinges off. Maybe they left his mouth when you were passed out, sir, respectfully. Let's listen to this one more time. Was, yeah, uh, I don't I'll think sustain he was, yeah, to strike. I'll, I'll sustain his argumentative and I'll move to strike. All right. Do you recognize this picture of Ms. Heard as a picture that was taken um, uh, directly after the December 15th, 2015 incident? I don't, I don't know when it was, I don't know when the photograph was taken. I don't know much about it. Okay. I was out of the picture. Take that down. In any event, you, you, you don't disagree that, um, that there was a, a headbutt that evening that I know, I know that there's disagreement about the cause of it, but you, you would agree that, um, that you headbutted Miss Heard that evening, correct? No, I would vehemently disagree with that, sir. There was a lot of, I was trying to restrain Mrs. Heard, uh, Ms. Heard um, and in the, once I had restrained her, um, it's, I, I would say, if she's trying to still move around and kick at me or trying to get loose, any sort of movement when you're like this and your heads are to get this close together, it, 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 it's not impossible for for um, for them to bump, but a headbutt a headbutt is uh, that's pretty extreme. Okay, let's well let's definition let, of that. Let's let's take a listen to. Um... All right, Chase, what do you got? You agree that you headbutted her that evening? I, I I'm actually yeah. surprised that the uh, council didn't object to this. And these leading questions are getting a little bit out of control. And this is one of the first things, first indicators that you see where people are in a mutually abusive relationship, where there, where the abuse is going both ways. It may not be physical on both sides, but there's still some level of abuse going back and forth between two people. It's a kind of a toxic relationship. It's not just one toxic human being, but you can see Amber straighten a bit here and Right at this moment, her chin comes up. Right at this moment, you'll see her chin come up at this moment of, of victory, this challenge moment, or just making a point. I think, uh, Mark, you were saying that earlier. Just marking that point and saying, Scott, I think you said it. See? Or was that? Was that great? This morning. It was, it was me. Smirky. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got here. Uh, Scott, what do you got? All right. Well, here's Caden slows down and his uh, volume and tone are a little bit lower as well. His arms and gestures are close to his torso, and that indicates he feels threatened. And in this case, uh, I think probably what happens is they clogged heads during that that struggle, and she's turned it into uh, him head her, uh, which when my brother and I would, would fight where little things like that would happen, and, and he'd say, I oh, did this or did that, and that would have happened, but it wouldn't be like, or whatever the thing was that happened would have happened. I would have hit him with something, but only because I was spinning around with it and actually hit him with it, but not on purpose. So I think that's what we might be dealing with in this case. Um, and this, uh, most of the illustrating is done with his head, and which has been his baseline so far. Most of the, is not when he's demonstrating something, when he's uh, illustrating something, he's not much of a hand user when, he, when it comes to that. He is showing concern on his forehead and his brow. Uh, at the beginning, and, and the, uh, as the stress grows, and his tone gets a little bit higher, and his, and his nostrils continue to flare as his, the anger grows. In a couple of places, a couple of places, we see the his jaw clench. So that's another thing that lets us know he's getting a little bit angry. Uh, but he's showing good constraint here at this point and, and control. The Amber's, Amber's movements are a little bit more fluid. And um, they're almost jumpy and jerky as she's writing down whatever she's writing on. Um, and she's pretty excited here. I think the most, uh, it's the most movie we've seen her so far. All right, uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. She's the most animated we've seen her because a piece of evidence comes up. My assumption is it, it shows um, some kind of bruising on her face or something like that, some kind of injury. And I think what's happening is she's going, OK, evidence, Johnny's reaction, evidence, Johnny's reaction, evidence, Johnny's reaction. And she wants to see, is this having an impact on him? Because my guess is, is this is an important moment for her. My guess is, is she's hoping that this is going to get some kind of visible reaction 
reaction from him. What we get at the end of all of this, I'd agree again, Scott, is on extreme definition of that is we get clear anger from him. He doesn't like the way that this is going. He's aggressive towards the way that this one's going. Greg, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm going to leave Amber Heard alone. You guys have nailed everything she did. For me, there's one thing that's concerning in Johnny Depp's body language. This is the first time we see this piece of body language where he tilts his head and kind of does some little snake thing off to the side. It's awkward. This is a really ugly interchange. If he had butted her, honestly, even if he restrained her. I'm a Southern boy. And if you restrain your girlfriend, you're probably going to get a visit from two guys named Bubba who are going to whip your ass. It's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. I mean, her brothers are going to come see you. That's the way it works, you know. So there's not a whole lot of restraint in my relationships. I don't grab my wife and decide I had enough of this. You know, it's just you're asking for problems. Mark, like we said, two kids doing that, they're going to get hurt. Whether it's intentional, where they had about it, don't know. One there. I'm going based on what I see here. Is it the reason that he does this is this is the crux of the entire matter. Now, I don't know whether he, there's another reason, but the crux of this entire case is did he, in fact, physically abuse her? If he did, then all bets are off and this case is thrown out because now it's not defamation. He did hurt. So then he goes to there's some rationalizing and he gets to that condemning at the end with the guy and he answers exactly the question the guy asked. Is this picture he's taken up the opportunity due to this attorney, what the attorney's been doing to him? Is this picture taken on this date? I, I don't know. He's asking, do you recognize this picture as taken on that date? But it's interesting to me that a guy is going to admit he's going to admit that he has done some restraining of someone because that alone in some states is enough for you to go to jail and to be considered domestic violence. Don't know about the laws in Virginia. Not sure of it. But there you go. And then he, he goes to passive voice for their heads bumping, which makes you think, well, there probably is a bunch of this struggling and tussling. And the next thing you know, their heads butt and something happens. So here we are. And then the thing that makes me the, the most annoyed in the entire thing is the guy from South Park is an attorney. Okay. That makes me nuts hearing an attorney use those words. Where did that come from? And I think it's he's being snarky back to Johnny Depp. So here we got it. I think, Chase, you hit it dead on. Regardless of whether there's physical abuse, there's a whole lot of volatility in this relationship. And neither one's good for the other one, clearly, you can see based on the way this thing is going. That's it for me. All right. Do you recognize this picture of Miss Heard as a picture that was taken um, uh, directly after the December 15th, 2015 incident? I don't, I don't know when it was, I don't know when the photograph was taken. I don't know much about it. Okay. I was out of the picture. Take that down. In any event, you, you, you don't disagree that, um, that there was a, a headbutt that evening that I know, I know that there's disagreement about the cause of it, but you, you would agree that, um, that you headbutted Miss Heard that evening, correct? No, I would vehemently disagree with that, sir. There was a lot of, I was trying to restrain Mrs. Heard, uh, Ms. Heard um, and in the, once I had restrained her, um, it's, I, I would say, if she's trying to still move around and kick at me or trying to get loose, any sort of movement when you're like this and your heads are to get this close together, it, 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 it's not impossible for for um, for them to bump, but a headbutt a headbutt is uh, that's pretty extreme. Okay, let's well let's let, of that. let's let's take a listen to um, let's let's listen to um, Exhibit Five Ninety Eight, please, Your Honor. This is another. Um, this is another recording that uh, I believe is just between the two. I just want to confirm with my team. But for now, um, we just uh, ask to uh, to play um, minutes 605 through 736 of right. 598. 598A and evidence of 605 to 736. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mm 
is the loudest, is most responsible. My 16 year old daughter heard just, you just saying but I'm that she would rather I'm not hear. By the way, because I'm louder. Okay, what's By the way, my family, my friends, everyone screaming. around me had, saw all the bruises and broken, uh, broken blood vessel under my eye, the bruises on my head, the missing chunks of hair, the split lip, the black eye, the swollen nose, all that. Because you're stronger. It does not mean. It does not mean because they heard me that I'm somehow more responsible. It just means they heard me because I yell in a fight. You do provoke. I yell. It doesn't mean I'm more responsible or better. However, I am exposed via that. The distance of between Cafe Cabronas and the house is significant. And I know, I know that that does not mean that they got an accurate representation of our fight. But if you told them stuff, great, cool. Thanks for exposing me. As I said to you before, don't do it again unless you want me to really also tell them my side of things. Because trust me, You're you know, to. trust me, you know I have a different side than you. And if I show them pictures and stuff, I'm sure they'll have an even more different side. And in fact, if I tell them even more stuff, they'll have an even more clear picture of what I think are both sides. Maybe, but I should you, show, maybe I should show him right. this but and you, this that's true. You from can the do, mineral spirits you can do whatever you want. Uh, uh, you can do whatever you can do whatever. By the way, do it. I, I promise you, do it. Do whatever you, you want. You don't want me to do that. No, you only you do never whatever speak you want. To you, again. you do whatever you want. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, you can see this is probably one of the worst looking things. Now, let me back up first. Somebody's recording this conversation. Not sure the other person is aware they're recording the conversation. The person recording a conversation can be glib and do all kinds of stuff if they understand they're being recorded and the other one doesn't. It's why we make things illegal, why you're not allowed to record. Thank God. I just looked up at Light Scott to make sure we we're recording. <laughs> why, you're not, why you're not allowed to record people without their knowing because you can bait them in, lead them down the path, just like we're watching this attorney try to rephrase things. So anytime I see that one person knows and the other one doesn't, hmm, I'm a little suspicious then. Uh, you see his blink rate and lip compression as he's trying to control some emotion. His mouth is open, his eyes are rolling, and then he's thinking, what's next? Puts his hand to his throat. That can mean he's feeling threatened, he's feeling endangered, can mean nothing. But in this case, we've not seen it ever. So something feels threatening to him is my guess. And then he brings up the mineral spirits about her throwing them in his face. That probably ties back to where he put his finger in. Who knows, unless it's just a regular practice to have mineral spirits sitting around and you know in their relationship, don't know where that goes. But this makes you feel like there's a whole lot of crazy going on at any given time, but it feels like it might be being manipulated by a person who's owning the narrative because listen to the difference in their tones. One is driving the conversation, the other is responding. That's all I got. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, usually if you hear one of those recordings and you hear the other person start speaking in a way that they're like throwing legal definitions in, making sure their tone is clear, using the other person's name a little more often than normal, then that's what we're hearing here. Depp's hand is kind of right here the whole time. And this is a little uncharacteristic, what we've seen the whole trial, she's kind of covering the throat or covering this uh, super sternal notch right here, this little notch down here. The little protective gesture, I'll let, uh, if you guys want to get into that. But the blink rate goes up, and towards the end of this recording is when it happens. His blink rate goes up in response to probably stress around having to answer these questions. But I want to talk about Amber really fast. There's an increased breathing rate. So she starts breathing faster. There's full bodily and facial avoidance. So everything is looking away from him. There's fidgeting, unwilling to look at Depp, and she's likely feeling embarrassed about the recording. But this could also be her avoiding eye contact because she's ashamed of what she's doing by leveraging this audio. So here might be a way that you can take a look. If she makes solid eye and body contact and stares at him during every moment where she's got him, and she's going to do something that she knows is going to be damaging, then this means that this recording was used for something that it probably wasn't originally meant in the audio. Scott, what do you think? I, he's a musician, so he listens a lot. And he listens to what how people say things, how they phrase things, especially coming from his introverted background. I can't believe he didn't say to her, "What are you? Why are you talking like this? What are you wearing a wire? You know what the you know what the what the hell's going on here?" 
that kind of surprised me when I heard that because it seemed so obvious at that point. And before when she when she had done this, she was doing the same thing. You nailed it. She's talking about she's bringing up specific points and using phrases and things and, and building this picture. You know, what about this? It's really, really odd. And he's as we're looking at him, he is concerned. He's looking at it and, uh, or not looking at that. But he's he's uh, showing concern in his brow. He's looking down, listening. He's looking up and listening. And she's not having any of it. She's not looking. You, you nailed that, Chase. She's not looking at him at all, because I think you're right. I think she's embarrassed about that. And she knows that's wrong and she shouldn't have done that. And she's trying to um, to avoid the eye contact because it, that'd be really tough to do at this point. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I think he knows uh, coming up is a recording that could uh, look bad for him. We see the adapter on the microphone, first of all. Uh, you can just see uh, around the corner of the computer screen there, you'll see two whites of his fingers there, and you'll see them gently stroking uh, his sleeve there. So he's got a self-soother going on. And on top of that, Chase, absolutely, the suprasternal notch there, his hand goes up. You know, sometimes you might think some people, they get hot under the collar. It isn't that. Usually, if it's that, there'll just be a vent. They'll do a venting action, and then they'll move away, or they'll maybe vent somewhere else as well. This is definitely protection there. He feels anxious and vulnerable around this particular um uh, conversation recording here. Now, what's interesting for me is that neither of them deny the results that they're talking about. Just what, you know, what may have been the results of what may be have been violence. Nobody denies that at all. And neither admit to how it came about. So, for example, in the case of the, 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 um, the spirits, uh, which is used in, in oil painting, by the way, Greg. So that's why the can of spirits is around. It's a paint thinner for that, for the art of, you know, drawing, you know, the usual kind of drawing penises, you know, over lampshades and stuff, you know, you know, the kind of art. Um, so, so it's there for that. And there is the indication there that a, a can was thrown and it hit Johnny's head. She doesn't deny that at all as much as he doesn't deny that uh, that there may have been violence that results in the action, but nobody talks about it. So no, nobody nobody denies the results, and nobody admits as to how those results came about. It kind of looks bad for everybody. Uh, it kind of just the best you can make out of it is is these two should not be together, and thankfully they they aren't together anymore. It can't go very well ever for for these two. But they're in court. It's equally as bad place to be, terrible place to be. Let's let's listen to um, Exhibit 598, please, Your Honor. This is another um, this is another recording that uh, I believe is just between the two. I just want to confirm with my team, but for now, um, we just uh, ask to uh, to play um, minutes 605 through 736 of right. 598. So 598A and evidence of 605 to 736. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Who's loudest is most responsible. My 16 year old daughter just, heard you just saying that I'm, she would rather I'm not louder. hear. By the way, because I'm louder. Okay, by the way, my family, my friends, everyone screaming? around me had, saw all the bruises and broken a uh, broken blood vessel under my eye the bruises on my head the missing chunks of hair the split lip the black eye the swollen nose all that because you're stronger it does not mean it does not mean because they heard me that i'm somehow more responsible it just means they heard me because i yell in a fight you do provoke i yell it doesn't mean i'm more responsible or better However, I am exposed via that. The distance of, between Cafe Cabronas and the house is significant. And I know, I know that that does not mean that they got an accurate representation of our fight. But if you told them stuff, great, cool. Thanks for exposing me. As I said to you before, don't do it again unless you want me to really also tell them my side of things. Because trust me, you know, to. trust me, you know I have a different side than you. I show them pictures and stuff, I'm sure they'll have an even more different side. And in fact, if I tell them even more stuff, they'll have an even more clear picture of what I think are both sides. Maybe but I should you, show them, maybe I should show right, them right. this. 
But from the earth, that's true. You from can the do, mineral you, spirits, you can do whatever you want. Or, or, you can do whatever. You can do whatever. You can do whatever. Face. By the way, do it. I, I promise you, do it. Do whatever you, you want. You don't want me to do that. No, you only do whatever you want. never speak to you again. You do whatever you want. All right, well, let's throw it around the room and uh, sort of sum up in 30 seconds or less what we think about what we've seen. Mark, what do you got? Well, yes, it is chaos and madness there, and that is the court of the king, isn't it? Uh, so somebody who wields power and can give out apartments and and have people around that will, you know, when, when people should be calling the police and, uh, you know, will just not do nothing, but, but certainly keep that relationship together in some ways is always going to breed more chaos uh, and more drama. So I think to an extent, um, Depp is getting the rock and roll that he's after. And at the same time, to Greg, to your earlier points, and I think we made it about our, our last herd adventure, is this is what happens when you fly close to the sun. Um, Heard is described as radiant. She is described as one of the most beautiful people that you can come across. And if you are that sun king and you want to get closer and closer to the sun, it's you, you might get burnt. It might be even more chaotic than you thought. Anyway, this is all going to go on for much, much longer. So I'm sure we'll talk about this more. Chase, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is just a story of the narcissist and the introvert. And that's really what we're seeing here. And as a pro tip, if like 40 people from five different circles of friends who don't communicate with each other all warn you not to date a certain person, consider it. Just consider it. <laughs> and this case has went from uh, defamation to defecation. She even took a giant number two on his bed. And that's the kind of person that is. And maybe that illustrates the kind of relationship that we're seeing. Now, I want to introduce a new behavioral term that I just invented this morning while I was watching these uh, videos. But a lot of what we're seeing here with Amber Heard is a behavioral tourniquet. Everything is just shut off as much as can be. And there's just tiny little things that are able to leak out, but not enough for critical mass to happen. So that's what a tourniquet does. Yeah. But here's one rule of thumb you can always look at, especially in court or depositions. Who in this scenario is controlling their behavior more? And take a look at that. And that should give you a good idea of where to start at a minimum. Greg? Yeah, so I will say this. I think the most dangerous thing you can possibly do is to be cloistered or sequestered with people. You've all been through it in the past two years with this crazy virus we've been through. And if you have a very small cloistered group, you're going to find enemies, friends, cohorts, all the same things you would do in a large group. But you may only have one or two people involved. And the richer and more famous you become, and when you become an icon that cannot walk the street, you have to be even more, more guarded because you're going to have that. The four of us could easily go into some kind of decay if we had to look only for all of our enemies, friends, and everything else within this group. You need to remember that in your daily life. So these people have been... And they may be fire or there may be gasoline and matches to start with, but they get closer and closer and closer and more locked down. And then, you know, there's in every relationship, there's entitlement and there's expectation. And if an expectation is not met and you think it's an entitlement and you ramp up and things go there over a birthday party or whatever, and then that person doesn't give you the feedback you expect, things escalate and escalate and escalate. And then there's certain levels of behavior that are acceptable within any given culture. Restraint probably is a bad idea and probably could be considered violence in some way. Headbutting is certainly violence if it's done intentionally. So we'll find out what the courts think, and that's the verdict. What we're seeing is what we can read and what we believe. What we think is there's a hell of a lot of volatility in here. And, you know, when I watch this, it is my opinion that, yes, she took the tip of his finger, if you're asking that question. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I think this is a great example. Uh, like Chase was saying a couple minutes ago, um, of the narciss narcissist versus the introvert and how they progress through a situation like this, how they act and, and what happens. And especially when they butt heads, which is going to happen quite often, I think. So you always hear opposites attract and all that. Well, in a lot of cases, that's true, you know, but in this case, I think it's too opposite. Um, the personalities are, are too far apart to be able to function together well. And I didn't see much in in the form of deception on him at all if any 
So, I mean, I saw some laying back, some trying not to give out information so it would sound worse to the attorney asking the questions. But I think this, I think he's being fairly honest, really honest. So I, I, I believe him, and I believe you're right, Greg. I believe that whole bit about the finger, I believe he's he's being honest about that. I don't think he cut his own finger off. That's ridiculous, especially being a musician. You wouldn't want to do it. It's one of the last things you want to do, especially being a guitar player, even though it was his right hand, not his left hand, which is where you um, use for chords and stuff. All right, fellas, I think this was a good one, and we'll see you next time. See you. Obviously, I don't know why I said I don't say this at all.